Hello and welcome to this video on quality management. In this video we're going to be looking at what is meant by quality control, assurance circles and total quality management. Secondly, the importance of continuous improvement and lastly how a business might gain a competitive advantage through having quality products. Several items and key terms in this video are in bold and those are the ones that's important you take down in your notes. Let's start off with our definition of quality. A product or service is of good quality if it meets the needs and expectations of the customer. How might a business measure whether it's got good or bad quality? Well, some of the following. They might do look at customer service ratings. If they've got a good rating, they've got a quality performance. They might look at the number of products that are being returned. They might look at the number of defective products that they're producing, products that aren't fit for sale. They might do surveys of the market Ultimately, a business that has good quality, you'd expect it to show in a decent profit margin. How might a business improve its quality? Well, a better understanding of customers' expectations will better enable them to meet their customers' needs. Training and motivating their employees should raise standards. Using technology might eliminate mistakes that workers might make. Working closely with suppliers might ensure good quality raw materials. Using different systems might help improve quality such as control, assurance circles and TQM. And we're going to look at the first two next. So two main approaches to quality management involve quality control and quality assurance and it's important we distinguish between these two. Quality control is a system based on inspection at the end of the process to remove any defective products. Whereas assurance is making sure that the processes during production have good quality so that quality is built in to the products and we don't need to remove the defective ones at the end. So quality control. Quality control is the checking of a good or service before it is delivered to a customer, i.e. at the end of the process. Again, an important definition to take down. Normally this relies on inspecting the products at the end of the manufacturing process. So for example, if a head chef inspects a meal on a plate before it leaves the kitchen to go to the customer, that would be an example of a quality or control approach. If a quality inspector tests a product at the end of a production line, that too would be a quality or control approach. If a supervisor records and listens into a phone conversation at a call center, again, it's been produced, the service has been delivered to the customer and they're checking it at the end. What are the pros and cons of this approach? Well, the main advantages, it can stop faulty products reaching the customer, which helps ensure quality. The inspector takes responsibility, there's a clear responsibility for who's in charge of making sure the products are of good quality. Some disadvantages, well the workers, the people who are producing the products, might not feel they have as much responsibility for overall levels of quality. And as you might have already thought of, the problems are already identified at the end of the process. So the waste levels may be high. You might have lots of defective products at the end and you're only spotting them at the last minute. An alternative approach is to introduce a method of quality assurance. Quality assurance is the checking of a product or service at each stage of its production, e.g. as it travels along a production line. And this relies upon self-checking. So each stage, the operatives are checking the work that they're doing. So for example, going back to our nightmare kitchen, a sauce chef might taste the sauce before passing it to the next chef who's in charge of the dish. Or similarly, on a car production line such as Toyota, each operative might check their stage of the process or component before passing it to the next, treating the next stage along like a customer. The pros and cons of this approach? Well, you can spot any fault early, which will save resources and waste. Also, it might make workers feel more motivated because they are more responsible for the overall quality of the production process. However, some disadvantages, you need to train your staff to be able to check their own work and they need to be very committed to this approach. If they feel under pressure, then the opposite may be the case and it might actually demotivate workers. So let's quickly sum up quality assurance versus quality control. Quality control is focusing on the outputs at the end. Quality assurance is focusing on the processes during the production process. Quality control is achieved by sampling and then checking the products inspection. Whereas 
Assurance is achieved by improving the processes at each stage. Control is targeted at production activities, whereas assurance is targeted at the whole organization everyone takes part. Control emphasizes standards, whereas assurance emphasizes treating people as the next customer. Control makes sure that defective products are inspected out at the end. Assurance that quality is built into the products during the process. So we've looked now at quality control and quality assurance. Let's move on to quality circles. Quality circles are informal groups of workers who volunteer to meet on a regular basis to discuss issues relating to the workplace, how to improve quality. And the philosophy behind this is that the people who would best understand the ways to improve the quality of what they're doing are the people who are actually doing that work. So the workers are the best people placed to suggest issues or suggest ways in which quality can be improved. Their recommendations are then reported back to the management and the idea is that increased employee participation in this process will make them more motivated. Total Quality Management or TQM is an overall management philosophy that focuses on continued improvements of products and services with the involvement of the entire workforce. So it's as if the entire workforce was part of a quality circle. The road to quality management or total quality, making sure everything is quality, is through a process of continuous improvement. So it's really about an attitude that the business has. The whole business understands the need for quality and seeks to achieve it. Everyone in the workforce is concerned with quality at every stage of the production process. Quality is ensured by workers and not inspectors. What are the pros and cons of this approach? Well, the, are the advantages. It's maybe motivational because workers feel more involved and are making decisions and recommendations. It's less wasteful than throwing out defective finished products. Disadvantages, well you need a strong leadership which is often missing to encourage and let TQM flourish. Substantial investment is required in training and support and you might not see an improvement necessarily in the short run but once that training has been embedded and practiced then actually the, the improvements in quality might materialize in the longer term. Bureaucratic, there might be lots now of extra little things that people have to do to ensure quality. So lots of extra tasks and that might slow people down. So you have to balance out maybe the disruption and cost, will they outweigh the benefits of making sure that everyone in the organization is partly responsible for quality. So let's move on now to the importance of continuous improvement. Now this is based on a Japanese concept of Kai meaning change and Zen meaning good. If you put the two words together, Kai Zen, you've got changes that are for good, the good of the business. And that what is what Kai Zen is all about. Kai Zen is a system that concentrates on small but frequent improvements in every aspect of the production process. All members of the workforce are involved and improvements can come from anybody at any level of the hierarchy from the chief executive to the most junior operative just applying screws perhaps to a machine. It requires a highly motivated and committed workforce and it's a vital component of making sure you have total quality management in place in your business. Let's move on to gaining competitive advantage through quality now. And to start that, let's think about what would happen. What are the risks if you have a poor quality product? Now, can you think of any examples in the recent years where businesses have suffered from poor quality products? There have been a few in the news recently, such as the horse meat scandal in 2013, and industry sales of red meat fell by 5%, which if you think of the value of all the meat that's bought in this country, quite significant. More recently, perhaps, the lack of quality at Alton Towers, very negative f impact on their business. The PPI mis-selling scandal. Even Toyota had to recall 10 million cars in 2010 due to a faulty accelerator, which had a significant cost to the business. So why is quality so important in business? Well, markets are highly competitive. Customers are knowledgeable, demanding, prepared to complain about poor quality, and increasingly these days able to share information about poor quality via Twitter and Facebook. If a business can develop a reputation for higher quality, 
then it may be able to create a competitive advantage over its competitors. It's more likely to attract customers and have higher demand. What are the benefits of having greater quality? Repeat purchases, customer recommendations, so you don't have to do as much marketing, you get more customer loyalty, more customer satisfaction, and all these things can feed off each other. Can you think of any businesses that use quality as a source of a competitive advantage? How about this one? Or this one? Maybe this one? That one? Or what do you think of this one? These might be examples of businesses who use their quality to give them a competitive advantage over their rivals. Their reputation attracts customers and maintains brand loyalty. Quality is not just about the product though. If you think about it, it's the whole customer experience, the whole buying process, the reliability of the product, often the after sales service, or even the cost of ownership. So quality is very closely linked with customer service. If you think about how you might judge the quality of a restaurant meal, it's not just the food alone, it'll be the service, the ambience, but of course the food as well. Now a lot of people assume that if you have good quality, then you have to have a high price, but that's not necessarily 100% true. You can think of perhaps examples that you would say of reasonable quality, but at a low price point. Perhaps this one, or this one, or about this one, maybe this one, or about that one. So in this video, we've looked at what is meant by quality, control, assurance, circles, and TQM. We've looked at the importance of continuous improvement through Kaizen, and we've looked at gaining a competitive advantage through quality. A reminder, you should have notes on each of these sections and the bits in bold with the definitions and key terms, the minimum that you should take down. That's all. Thanks very much.